Hi guys, Dr. Sammy Gibson here with Eastwood Animal Clinic. And one of the things we're going to talk about today are some of the red flags and signs for anxiety, a little bit more specifically, separation anxiety. Um, this does apply to dogs and cats, but they will show the clinical signs a little bit different. Uh, heads up as we go on, uh, I'm going to read some of the clinical signs for it. There's a big list, so I'm actually going to read it off of a peer-reviewed article for you guys so that I don't miss some of it, because there's a lot. Um, so back to separation anxiety. Basically, some patients are more predisposed to it than, than others, and it's usually those patients with owners and clients that have big hearts, and they're trying to help patients that are coming out of crappy situations and that kind of thing. So shelter dogs, abusive situations, strays that have been on the street for who knows how long, and these patients, they can develop some problems and are a little bit more predisposed. So thank you to you owners and organizations that reach out and help these, these pets. Um, they definitely need it, need somebody to help them out. And thanks for taking them to your veterinarian because uh, it helps a lot of them. And just some general tips, um, separation anxiety, anxiety, back 20 years ago or so, it really wasn't a big thing in the veterinary community as technology and everything's advanced, we've learned a lot about behavior disorders and things in our canine and feline patients. So as we progress with some of that, um, so have the vet schools and the education associated with it. Um, some numbers, they all vary depending on the research paper and things, but it's estimated that there's a 20 to 30 percent of the canine population that does have an underlying anxiety issue whether it's associated with noise phobias, 4th of July, separation, general anxiety, that varies dramatically from patient to patient. Um, some of the big red flags are patients that are destructive or vocalizing a lot when you're gone. Sometimes they're self-traumatizing and you know that can progress quite a bit and cause some issues. Uh, I'm gonna reference paper here real quick, so just give me a second, guys. Um, there is evidence that 55% of affected dogs will show clinical signs in less than three years. Cats, for some reason, seem to show their behavior changes at middle age, so over seven years. Um, I do not know exactly why, that's just kind of what the research paper was suggesting. It does not matter on the age, the breed, or the sex of the patient to be predisposed to anxiety issues but more so probably the background and the history with that patient from different situations. So here's some of the clinical signs for you guys just to look for. And once again, I'm gonna reference the article a little bit that is a peer reviewed article from 2017. So relatively fresh information. Uh, big clinical signs for separation anxiety in dogs and cats are vocalization, destruction, inappropriate elimination, pacing back and forth quite a bit. Um, some of these guys will get so stressed out they will develop vomiting, diarrhea. For those of you that have boarding, occasionally after a few days some of your patients will get a stress diarrhea. They're stressed out from being at the clinic or other dogs barking or not being with the owners and they'll get a little bit of loose stool. Typically when they go back home that's the end of it. It's not a problem. So we usually call that a stress diarrhea. Um, some patients will get aggressive, self-mutilization. Um, they'll try and escape, and some of these guys will break teeth and have some issues like that. So keep an eye out for some of those things, guys. And you know, if you have any concerns or questions or suspicions of it, just touch base with your veterinarian, and they'll do the best they can to help you out, and we'll go from there. Take care, guys. Bye.